Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus. Boy, excited to be here today. Got a good program today. Can't wait to get to, get to the preaching, amen. But we've got an announcement here. Uh, November the 20th, uh, Feed the Hungry program will be going on with uh, Pentecostal Power Ministries. If you need more information, amen, uh, uh, get a hold of them at 256-996-5123, amen. Today on our program, we're going to have Brother Kenneth Crane uh, the name of his message is, What Path Are You On? Amen. In other words, what path are you going down? Glory be to God. Uh, uh, his, his wife, Sister Karen Crane, will be singing, Thank God I'm free. Amen. Thank God I'm free. Glory be to God. If you would, please subscribe, like, and click the bell to turn on your notifications on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. Also, check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now sit back and enjoy this video. Amen. I want to say praise the Lord and welcome you to What the World Needs is Jesus. What a time to be alive. Yes. What a time to know that our name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I tell you what, if your name ain't written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's what we're here to try to, le uh, to lead you to Christ. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you, it's not his will to any should perish, the Bible says, but it all come to repentance, see. Hey, don't nobody die and go to hell. Jesus died for us all. That's he right. said, if I be lifted up above heaven and earth, he said, I draw all men into me. Yeah. See, when you feel that drawing spirit, when you feel the spirit drawing you, you need to give your heart to the Lord. I'm going to tell you what, boy, people's dying. I mean, this people's dying, and the sad thing about it is a lot of them knows about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's so sad. To, that's so sad. To, uh, yes, don't you listen to It's so sad to know, to know that you know about Jesus and you've heard about him all your life, but you wait too late to call on Jesus. Boy, that's sad. That's so heartbreaking to know that there's a place you can go to where you're wanted, you're welcome. Yeah. It was made for you. And then end up, somebody let the, this, this life catch up with them and death catch up with them. And they end up in a place where they're not wanted. See, so Hebrews 9, 27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, but this to judgment. Right. We're all going to step up before Jesus. What are we going to hear whenever he speaks to us? Jesus Christ give us his word. We got his word right here. This book right here is our road map, my a uh, way to know how to live and how to talk and what to say and what not to say. And this is my, uh, when I get in this word right here, it brings comfort to my soul. It brings peace to my soul. It brings joy to my soul. Because why? Because this word right here is living and breathing. It's real. Uh, it's not no, this is not something that was just written to put out there to sell books. This is life in this word right here. Yes, it is. Amen. And Jesus gave us this, praise God to sustain us, to help us to know what to do, how to do, and when to do it in order to direct us on our way to heaven. See, we're on a road. And we're on the right path if we're living for Jesus Christ. But we're all on a road. Where's, that, where's your path leading, though? Mm -hmm. See, if you're not on this uh, road that we're on with Jesus, then you're on the wrong road. You're he heading in the direction you don't want to go, and it'll carry you into a place to where you don't want to be. Right. But I'm telling you, we're on the path, praise God, has carried me somewhere I want to be. Mm -hmm. I've read this book, praise God, and I know heaven's real. Amen. Jesus loves you. I want to ask you something today, praise God. Listen, today, if today was your last day, where would you spend eternity at? Well, I tell you, I just feel an urgency from the Lord about this. I know I've repeated stuff a lot on, on the broadcast, but I'm telling you, listen to me, you ain't got but one soul and you ain't got but one shot with it, and you better make sure you get it right. That's it. Because when your breath leaves your body, it's over with. You ain't going to be, you, there is no other change once your breath leaves your body. I know it's taught that there is. But see, there's false teachers, false preachers, false prophets out there. Why? Because the Bible says they are. See, I go by what thus says the Word of God. See, I hear a lot of opinions out in the world. But I'm going to tell you something. Opinions are a dime a dozen. But this Word right here is true and it's real and it's holy. It's a holy, true, living word of God wrote by men, praise God, as they was moved upon by the Holy Ghost. They put it on down and wrote it down for us to be able to follow. And see, they, they, the disciples and everything, the prophets, disciples, Jesus, 
They walked this earth. And they experienced what life was about and they put it down in pen and paper here on paper that we can read it and learn from what they did and made mistakes. Jesus didn't make no mistake. The, uh, Peter and all of them, they made mistakes and they wrote it down for our learning, for our examples that we can go by and get in this Word and say, well, I don't need to do that. And you see, and if I read this Word and I get it down in my spirit and I allow the Holy Ghost to reveal that Word to me, praise God, He'll give me understanding of it. When I'm walking through life and I'm coming up to a situation, and all at once I feel that small, still voice. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel, praise God, the witness. When I feel that small, still voice say, don't go that way. And I recognize who that is, and I know that it's the Lord, and I know the Spirit speaking to me. We're going to go in a little bit different direction. We're going to go around that circumstance. Amen. Instead of going up to that circumstance that could cause me problems, the Lord will lead you around it. But if we're not sensitive to the Spirit, we don't know any different. Sometimes we're walking through life being bombarded because we're not, we've not got that relationship to understand when the Lord speaks to listen. He's speaking, but are we listening? I want to read you something right here. I'm just going to uh, start reading here. I'll, I'm going to read. I'm going to start reading this in Matthew. I'm going to read verse 16. I'm going to start reading in uh, 24. Let me see. Read. Let me jump back right here to start off. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If a man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, you go on into the scriptures, there's a scripture that says, Take up your cross daily, Jesus said, and follow me. It's not take it up on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, or whatever night you go to church. It's not just take it up then and follow me at those times. Take it up daily and follow me. Not, not this one hour a day, or not five hours a day, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week, this is what we got to do. It's not a when we feel like it thing, or, or if we want to do it, we'll do it. Or if we get in trouble, we'll do it. You see, God is God on the mountain, just the same as He is in the valley. See, he, he'll, he'll walk with me on the mountain, and He'll walk with me in the valley. He'll walk with me, praise God, when everything's going good, He's there with me. When everything's going wrong, He's there with me. So, I'm going to trust the Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I want to take up my cross. Now, does every day go my way? No, 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 no. I have situations that come up, it, it, and I have to fight through those things. I have to, uh, I strive to do the right thing. Praise God, the Bible says to strive to enter in. I strive every day to do the right thing. Do I always do the right thing? Am I saying I'm perfect? Oh, no, I ain't saying I'm perfect. No, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I make mistakes just like anybody else does. If I make a mistake, I know where to go with it, though. I take it to Jesus. On my knees, and I ask Him to forgive me, and I repent and get up and move on. And I'm going to tell you something. If you ever hit your thumb with a hammer, and you ain't never used one, and you get it out, and you start nailing, and you hit that thumb, you may hit that thing for off and on a while, but after a while, you know what will happen? You'll get more accurate of hitting that nail to start it instead of hitting that thumb. And our walk with, with the Lord Jesus Christ is the same way life is an experience that we go through every day. And the more we walk through our life, as I've got older, I've tried to learn th from my mistakes in the past not to bring them up in the future to make them same mistakes. So therefore, I'm going to take up my cross yeah. and I'm going to follow Jesus. Now, I want you to listen right here to what it says. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall, will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. I laid my life down years ago at the foot of Jesus. And I said, Jesus, I need you to save me. The, the old man, this old way I'm living, I can't go that route anymore. I'm going to lay it down at your feet. I want you to change my life. Yeah. And when he saved me... Praise God and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Praise God and His Spirit. Guess what? I laid my life down and gave it to Him. He gave me a new life uh -huh. and a new walk. And we're walking in that newness that He gave us. Praise God. Walking up right with Jesus. Praise God. Striving to enter into yes. the straight yes. gate. Yes. And that's what we're trying to do every day. We're trying to live our life for Christ. Exactly. Now listen to what it says. For what is a man... For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There's people out there that have got hundreds, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in a bank account. 
And, and they just concentrate constantly on that money. And they'll give away a little bit of everything with it. But what is it going to gain that man if he's worth $1,200 billion? And the Lord says tonight, thy soul is going to be required of thee. And you leave here undone without Jesus Christ. What good is all that wealth and all that money? What good is it going to do you? Putting it back, see? Wherever a man, wherever that your heart is, that's where your treasure is, see? I, we need to set our treasures up in heaven. Praise God, talking about spiritually. Yes, sir. Amen. See, where a man can't get up there and or nothing can mess with it, see? It's up in heaven. See, my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and there ain't no man on this earth can go up there and take it out. That's right. Amen. They, see, they fly, they say they can go to the moon. <laughs> they can't go to the moon and block my name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. It can't happen. No, sir. See, I can go to the moon, but I still ain't going to be where the Lord's at. Because he's up above all that, see. Right. I'm telling you, he's high and lifted up. Praise God. He's above the stars. He's up above the clouds. He's up uh, in there, praise God, in what they call the third heaven there, praise yes, God, Amen. where the Father's at, see. And I'm telling you, listen, Jesus Christ is real. He's not no a figment of my imagination, praise oh, God. Yeah. That ain't just something that I feel, praise God, whenever I turn on some kind of music and I feel something goosebumps or something like that. No, I feel him right here, praise yeah, God, inside yeah, of me right amen. now. That's the Holy Ghost. That's that living water yeah, springing up. The Bible says into oh, everlasting life. <laughs> See, because he said his spirit will bear witness with my spirit that I'm his. Amen. So I don't have no doubt who's I, I don't have no doubt whose I am. Mm-hmm. I know in whom I serve. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And I want you to know something today. Jesus loves you. Yeah. And he wants you to know that he loves you. And he gave his life for you that you could have life. Listen to what it says in the rest of this. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I can assure you right now, I can assure you that there's people that's slipped up, messed up, didn't get right with the Lord, didn't give their life over to Jesus Christ, and they left here undone without Jesus. Mm. That was probably millionaires and, and had all kinds of wealth and all kinds of things upon this earth. If you could peel back the earth and ask them, what would you do to come out of here? They'd say, I'll come out of here and live in a cardboard box. Yes, sir. Just give me another change. Yeah. But you see, the thing about it is, all their wealth can't buy them out of it. Right. No. All their houses they got, they can't trade them and get yourself out right. where they at. Right. Come on. See, if you deny Jesus here, he ain't going to have no other choice but deny, to deny you when you step up before him. Right. But if you're born again, you're living for Jesus, and you've kept the faith, and you've fought that good fight, praise God, and you step up before Jesus. And it don't matter if you got money or you don't have money. It don't matter if you're black, white. Uh, it don't matter what country you're from, what country you're in. It don't make no difference. If you're blood-bought, born-again, Holy Ghost-filled, you step up before Jesus, he's going to look at you and say, Welcome in, my well and faithful servant. You've made it home. Welcome on to the house. Yes, sir. He'll say, come on in. See, into a place where there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more heartache, no more tears to dim the eyes. A place where there'll be no heartache, no heartbreak. There'll be no graves in heaven, no hospitals in heaven, no, there'll be no nursing homes in heaven. There won't be no walkers in heaven. There won't be no strokes in heaven. There won't be no heart attacks in heaven. There won't be no sin in heaven. There won't be no temptation in heaven. We'll be in a place of peace, love, joy. I mean, this... My, 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 my. I'll tell you what. It's going to be worth every struggle, every uh, heartbreak we've ever had on this earth. Yes, it It'll is. be worth it all to step from here into eternity where time will be no more. Amen. It's going to be worth it. Yeah, Christian, yeah. it's going to be worth it. Yeah. I know you. There's people listening to this and you go, you, you've been fighting and you've been struggling and you've been having hard times. It seemed like it, everything that can go wrong went wrong. And praise God, it just seemed like this life's bombarding you. Yeah. It'll be worth it. Yeah. You keep fighting that good fight. You don't give up. You don't back up. You don't yeah, turn your man. back on the Lord because he didn't turn his back on us when he was on the cross. Ooh, he on, faced man. his head on, praise God. He looked out up yes, over the sir. crowd and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. What In this world, the Bible says we're going to have trials and tribulation, but Jesus said to be a good cheer for I've overcome yes. this world and you can Glory overcome it God. through. through Two, not through your own self. Mm-hmm. See, we got to quit trying to fight this fight of our, with our own selves. It's got to be through the Spirit that you do it. Yeah. See, 
This Bible right here, praise God, is not carnally understood, it's spiritually understood. So a spiritual man, a man that's uh, born again has that spiritual mind will understand this word, but a carnal-minded man can't understand it. See? It's just sounding words to a man. See, the Bible said the preaching and the cross to them that perish is foolish, but to us it's the power of God. See, without the cross, Jesus uh, wouldn't have died. He, he, without having the cross, Jesus wouldn't have died on it. But thank God, amen, there was an old tree of cross, praise God. Jesus did die on it, and on the third day, he rose. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Heavenly Father making intercession for you and I. Now, let me read on right here a minute. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. What kind of works are we going to have when we step up before Jesus? Are we going to have a little one of these little bags that's about this tall that zips up, full of things that we've done for the Lord? Are we going to have, praise God, a bag we can't drag behind us? It's so heavy. Of being obedient unto the Lord when he told us to go do something. What's going to be in the book of remembrance when it's opened up, when they look at us? What's going to be in that book of remembrance? I hope Jesus opened it up and said, on such and such date, uh, you was down there, Brother Larry, and Mary, and your wife, Rick, Mary, and all of y'all. Look, y'all was together down there obeying me, doing what I told you yes, to sir. do. Yes, sir. Or is he going to look and say, man, you don't even... I got this right here. Let me see. He, he pulls it out. He pulls it out. Let me get something right here. And he goes. Yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> he pulls it out and he goes. Well, let's see. It's easy to read. You got two little old things here. Uh, Think about that. Yeah. What are we doing for the Lord? Are we doing his will? Are we, are we obeying the Lord when he tells us to do things? Are we walking our life 24 hours a day, seven days a week? That Christ is there because when you think he's not there, he's there. Uh -huh. He's a God that never slumbers nor sleeps. Right. He hears all, sees all, knows all. There's nothing that goes by him that he don't know about. You say, well, there may be uh, two million uh, Christians in, in the world. Might probably more than that. I don't know. I, I ain't really never thought about it like that. I'm just using this for an example. Right. 2,000 Christians all at one time awake during the day. God knows all, sees all, hears all, nothing goes by him. It don't make no difference who, where you're at, what you're doing. He knows it all. Right. He has an all eye. He has an eye that sees all. Yes. So you see, it ain't that we're going to be able to sneak around and hide somewhere and say, well, the Lord don't know I'm over here. I can do this. <laughs> he knows. Yeah, he does. Trust me, he knows. Listen to what he says right here in verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there's... Be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now we're fixing to get into it right here and read a little bit. It's in uh, Matthew chapter 17. And after six days Jesus take a Peter, James, John, and his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured by them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. Woo, boy, wouldn't that, I'd, I tell you, that'd be something been standing there to see the kingdom of God standing there glowing out before you. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Boy, I'm telling you what now, that would have been something to have been part of that right there. See, they were standing there and actually seeing the kingdom of God. Yes. Right there before them, they saw it. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the king. He was walking before them, but they didn't really get a full understanding of it until they said, right then, right there. They saw the kingdom of God right there. See, the kingdom of God ain't going to... I ain't got to go out here somewhere to a church to find the kingdom of God. Oh, so the day I got born again, the kingdom of God came in here. Yes, sir. Amen. So when to see the thing be about it is, when we walk into the building, we bring the kingdom of God into the building. That's right. That's Amen. why Jesus said, we're two or three together in my name, there am I in the midst. Because if he's in the house, and you bring two or three in with you, then that means he's in the house. That's right. That's good. You see what I'm saying to you? You see, the kingdom of God's in this house right here. Mm -hmm. Jesus is in the midst of us because there's more than three sitting in here saved. Yep. So he's in the midst of us. That's the reason pray. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen right here what it says now. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. You know what? It's good for me to be here today because 
I can say I've been in the midst of the Spirit of the yeah. Lord in the midst Amen. of God today right here where we're at. Yes, We've been right in church there. right here. Yes, sir. We've been in church right here where we're at today. And this is, I can st- I leave here today and say it's been good to be yes. in the house of the Lord. Yes. I'm telling you what. Listen right here now. Lord, it is good for us that we be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice of the cloud, out of the cloud, which said, this is the main thing that I want you to hear right here. I want you to listen to this right here, what God said. This is my beloved son. Glory to God. That was the Father speaking down, telling them, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I feel the Holy Ghost, praise God. I'm telling you, feel like my hair is going to blow off of my head. Now listen to what it says right here now. This is what we need to get down in our spirit. Hear hear ye him. Hear ye him. That's what we need to do today, praise God, Christian, is hear ye him mm-hmm. when he speaks. And when he speaks, obey. Yeah. Yeah. Do what he tells you to do. Yeah. Well, now, I've got people that just don't like me to, uh, to obey God. Well, whoop de do <laughs> They didn't like Jesus, praise God, walking through and messing up their plans, praise God. Just obey God because I'm going to tell you something. Oh, but the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. It's always better to obey God. Well, see, if you let two or three choke you down and get you to quench your spirit, next thing you know, you'll be drying up. And the next thing you're going to know is God's going to say, well, if you won't do it, I'll move on to somebody else. Uh-huh. See, the disciples went through a town, a place. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. You can go in there and dig it up. They was walking through a place and they was praising God for what he'd done and all that. And there's a bunch of them saying, y'all, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Y'all quiet now. We don't hear about all that. Jesus said if they hold their peace, the rocks will cry out uh-huh. in their place. I don't want no rock or nobody to take my place. When the Lord says do something, I'm going to do it. Say, I've been there. I've been there and seen how powerful he is. When you try to go in the opposite direction he tells you to, just how small we are and just how big he is. Because I'm going to tell you something. I've had some experiences. And, and, and I've learned some things in my walk with the Lord. And when he says do something, I'm going to do it. Yes. And that's what we need to do. Yep. See? He's saying, hear ye me. Mm-hmm. When I speak, hear me. The Lord's speaking. The Lord is standing at people's hearts, doors, knocking. Uh-huh. Saying, hear me. I'm at the door knocking. Let me in. Yeah. People are dying and going to hell and the Lord's standing at the door knocking saying, let me in. And he's trying to keep us from going to that horrible place and we won't let him in because we're worried about what somebody else is going to think about it if we get saved. But I'm going to tell you something. Let me just put, I was talked about before I got saved. I'm talked about since I am saved. So let them talk all they want because when Jesus calls, I'm going to hear ye him. And I'm going to be out of here. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what it's all about. See, the thing about it is, is there's people out there that the Lord's dealing with you to come to Him. He's got a work for you to do. He's got souls that you can that you can reach. But you're not coming to Him. Them souls are in jeopardy. You may be the only one that can reach them. Yeah. And God said, come to me. Let me save you. i got a work for you to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's work to be done out here. The Bible says, that the, praise God, the Harvest is ripe and ready yeah. out there, yeah. but the laborers are few. Yeah. See, that's the key right there, praise God. You look out over a cotton field and it's all white and they uh-huh. sprayed it and the leaves are fell off and it's, it's ready to go to picking. If they don't pick it, see, after a while, here comes the rains and the storms and that cotton will be laid on the ground and it'll go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. The fields are ripe and ready. Yeah. And he's trying his best to say, come on, i got work for you to do. And listen, Christian, don't listen to somebody trying to tell you that you can't go out there and do what God's telling you to do. Oh, I feel I hope somebody listen to me. Come on, when the Lord tells you to go do something, don't keep trying to get somebody to go with you. It's going to drag you down and hinder you when God's telling you to go do something. Right. 
sometimes you could carry a, a brother or sister with you that could be a hindrance to what God's trying to get you to do. Get up, go on, because I'm going to tell you something, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Right. If the master's in the house, I don't need nobody to go with me, praise God, because the one that's in me is the one that's going to go. And guess what? If he's wanting you to go talk to somebody, it's not going to be you going to be doing it. It's going to be he that's in you is going to speak Amen. out of you. Amen. And once you go to doing those things and obeying God, you'll realize it's not about you, it's all about Him. Because uh -huh. you know what? I can't save nobody. I can't heal nobody. But I can call on the one that can do yes. it. Amen. Through faith. Because see, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Uh -huh. But He is a rewarder of them that did it really seek Him. Yes. See? I can pray the prayer of faith, pray over somebody, and see it happen. We've seen people get healed. Seen it instantly. See people get healed. You, I didn't do it. He done it. That's right. That's right. But you see, I had faith to believe what the Word says. If I prayed, I believed God would do it. Mm -hmm. We prayed. God did it. You see how it works? It's through faith we believe these things, see? But I'm telling you, the Lord loves you. Boy, He's reaching out to somebody. Let me read that again. I'm going to read it again. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. <laughs> Bible says faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word. Uh -huh. See, you want your faith built up, get in the word. Yep. You want your faith strengthened, get in the word. Yep. I need to know what I need to do. Get in the word. Uh -huh. Get in the word and be a doer of it. James 1 22 said, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. That's right. See, we're deceiving our own self by not reading the Word and doing it. Exactly right. See, if my wife cooks supper, and she cooks supper and says, look, the supper's on the table, and I sit there and don't go in there and get that food, it ain't her fault. She cooked it, made, pre made preparations, done it all, laid the spread, sitting on the stove. All I got to do is get up and go in there and do my part. Amen. The Lord is saying it's high time for us to get up yeah. and be about my business. Yes. Because you're not going to go out and win no soul sitting down on me, he said. Amen. If you'll get up, be about my business, then you'll see a blessing come your way. Yeah. But he said, I can't bless idleness. Right. He, can't, he said, I can't bless slumbering and sleeping. Nope. He can only bless actions. He can only bless actions when you're up and doing for him. Right. Be about the Father's business. Don't be looking around, worried about anybody else. Don't be looking around and worrying about what uh, the world says. See, this world, praise God, don't like us no way. That's what we're trying to do here is be a light to a world. He said, if your gospel's hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We're going to hit somebody in the right... The, the, we'll hit somebody with the right word and the Holy Ghost will go, boom! Amen. And then they're going to say... Man, there's something right there about that. There's something about that, Jesus. I, 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 need to, I, I need to listen to that a little bit more. Yeah. And the next thing you know, guess what's going to happen? Conviction's going to go to sitting in. And then they're going to say, man, ah, there's something going on here. And then they'll say, well, I, mean, I think I will give that Jesus a try. Yeah. They said if uh, I feel that the Spirit drawing me, and I'll ask Jesus to save me and confess my sins and ask Jesus to save me. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that confession is made into salvation. And I ask Jesus to save me and I stand up and tell my wife, holler at my wife, I just asked Jesus to save me and he did. I'm born again. Amen. That confession was made into salvation. Yeah. And then they're going to say, my, 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 my. I thought them old preacher boys was crazy. <laughs> Good night, I thought they was telling me a fairy tale. But glory to God, that is real. And then they're gonna go to, and then you'll say, well, now I gotta tell my wife about this that it's real. I gotta go tell my kids about yeah, this. Yeah. I need to go out here and tell my neighbors I got yeah. born again. I, I I need to go down here to this church, praise God, and tell them, tell some of them down there. They, they, they told me when I was young that I wasn't worth nothing. I, I, I wasn't I was I was hopeless. There wasn't no chance for me. Uh -oh. And then but then you go in there and you say, I come in to tell y'all some good news. <laughs> Jesus Christ is real, praise yes. God, and He oh, is really God. saved me. Praise and the Lord. See, you never know how many church members in there might actually get saved. That's right. That's you right. see, just because you go in there for, in that church, praise God, don't mean everybody's sitting in there saved. That's right. Right. See, we're, we're, we're trying to let everybody know Jesus loves you. Yes, sir. He died for you, praise God. 
And you must, you must. Jesus said in John 3 and 3, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he'll not see the kingdom of God. That right there is his word, not my words, it's his word. See, you must be born again. Amen. You'll not see the kingdom of God without being born again. How are you going to get born again? Asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior yes, and repenting sir. of your sins and asking Him to save you. Well, I've heard there's other ways to get there. But that's hogwash. That's right. We're going to go into the Word. Go open your Bible up. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man, woman, child can come to the Father but by me. Not only, only Jesus can get you there. Yeah. That song says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's it. What can make me, my heart white and clean? Only the blood of Jesus. On, see, no other way you're going to get there. Amen. And see, Christian, when it seems like it, all the ways in life is over your head, they're always under Jesus' feet. He'll never let you go down, praise God. He'll always reach down and lift you up. As long as you don't turn uh, turn your back on him and say, I don't nothing else to do, we. It don't matter how far when you start going down, you say, Jesus, he'll reach down and lift you up. That's right. See, if you fall down, Christian, get up. Yes, sir. Repent, dust yourself off, and say, let's try this again. That's good preaching right there. Keep on keeping right. on. You know what? We're going to keep on keeping on, and one day we're going to step from here over into eternity. Amen. This can happen just like that. Jesus loves you and he wants you to know that he loves you. Yes. Christian, don't quit keep it on, keep it on. Keep fighting that good fight. Yes, you backslid on the Lord, you turn around and come back to the Lord. Yes, if you lost none done without Jesus, I pray God's going to convict every person yes, that listens yes. to this. If you don't know Jesus, God's going to He's going to draw you. Yes. He's going to draw you and just keep drawing you. And just give in to Jesus. Give him a try. Yes. Give him a try. If you ever give him a try, yeah, buddy, I'm going to tell you something. You've seen these commercials about chips. They say you can't only eat just that one. I'm going to tell you something. You get Jesus in your life and you'll read one scripture. You won't be able to only just read one. You'll That's keep right. wanting to read, 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 read. The That's more right. you learn, the more you know. You'll have, you'll have to because this right here, see, this feeds my spirit. Right. This feeds my, uh, praise God, it feeds my spirit and my soul right here this does. Jesus loves you. We love you. want to see you saved if you ain't. Until next time, God bless every one of you and thank you for listening to What the World Needs is Jesus. For a long time I traveled Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy In sin I sank close about Jesus what a wonderful hour I'm so glad I found out he would bring me out through his saving power thank God I am free 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 from this world of sin been washed in the blood of Jesus been born again bird out of prison taking its flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight like a poor wretched beggar that found fortune and fame I'm so glad I found out he would bring me out through his God, I am free, free, free from this world of sin, been washed in the blood of Jesus, been born again, hallelujah, I'm free, free, free by his wonderful grace, I'm so glad I found out he would bring me.
just want to say we appreciate you for watching What the World Needs is Jesus. Amen. We we love each and every one of you. Amen. And just want to say that we thank you for watching. Amen. If you have a prayer request, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262 or Brother Larry Moss at 256-603-0641 or Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858 or you can also get a hold of Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854 and I guarantee you, any of these men would want to talk to you, would want to lead you to Jesus Christ to help you in any way we can. Amen. I tell you what, there's nothing like being a Christian today. Amen. Living a good Christian life. Glory be to God. You can also get a hold of us through email. Amen. You can email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. Amen. Until our next broadcast, may God richly, richly bless you. Amen. Amen.